Hello, I am Denis Boscourt from University of Valparaiso, Chile. I am a climatologist working on anthropogenic climate change, regional climate modeling, and atmospheric teleconnections. I am going to talk about recent near surface temperature trends in the Antarctic Peninsula from observed reanalysis and regional climate model data. The Antarctic Peninsula has recently been a site of remarkable temperature change, with a long-term warming trend in near-surface temperature observed over the last 60 years. Changes in large-scale circulation patterns like Antarctic oscillation and associated strengthening of westerly winds are thought to be the main drivers of the long-term warming. Despite the long-term warming trend, recent studies also showed the existence of a regional cooling trend in some parts of Antarctica, including the Antarctic Peninsula, since the late 1980s. However, there is still a general lack of multiple data source comparison and evaluation efforts to assess and minimize uncertainties and possible errors of interpreting the data arising from using a single data source. Given these considerations, the main objective of the present study is to investigate recent near-surface temperature trends of the Antarctic Peninsula by combining observed reanalysis and regional climate model data. Given the different climate characteristics of the peninsula on the windward and leeward sides of the Cordillera, we first analyzed the four temperature observations to demonstrate trend differences on both sides. Then we use ERA-5 and ERA interim for further analysis and comparison. Finally, we use Hinka simulations performed with Polar Wolf Regional Climate Model force with ERA interim over the Antarctic Peninsula on a nested domain configuration at 45 km and 15 km spatial resolutions for the period 1991 to 2015. In addition, we include hint cast simulations of RACMO model force with era interim obtained from the Cordex Antarctica domain at 50 km spatial resolution for further comparison. The figure presents the recent period time series of summer, autumn, and annual mean near surface temperature for the windward and leeward station. Observed trends show contrast between summer and autumn. A trend of summer cooling exists on the both sides except the San Martin station. In autumn, warming takes place at each station except the Larsen Ice Shelf. At the annual scale, annual warming trend is notable at San Martin whereas Lassena shelf exhibits cooling. This figure compares the near-surface tem temperature trends for ERA-5 and ERA interim on summer, autumn, and annual timescales. In general, both gridded products indicate a cooling trend in summer for almost the entire peninsula. Unlike the overall cooling trend in summer, both products show the existence of a clear warming in major parts of the peninsula in autumn season. In particular, amplified autumn leeward warming detected in a winter. At the annual time scale, the warming on the lights and ice shelf is notable in both reanalysis. To illustrate the potential role of atmospheric circulation chains on the temperature trend contrast of summer and autumn seasons, we compare 
summer and autumn trends in mean sea level pressure and 850 hectopascal wind components from Arafat. The wind war warming trend is likely to be associated with the recent deepening of the amundsen bellingshausen sea low and warm advection towards the Antarctic Peninsula. On the other hand, an overall summer cooling is characterized by the strengthening of the weather sea low as well as an anticyclonic trend over the Amundsen Sea accompanied with northward winds. We also compare the maps of summer and autumn near surface air temperature trend for dynamically downscaled simulations and their boundary conditions, as well as RFI. A general cooling of the summer and a marked warming of windward in autumn are notable. Numerical simulations reproduce the overall cooling trend and, in contrast to the boundary conditions of era interim, they show a cooling trend over the Alexander Island. In autumn, unlike the ray analysis, the simulations show a cooling trend over large parts of the leeward side, including the Larsen Ice Shelf region, in agreement with the observed trend. The differences in temperature trends between multiple data sources exist at annual scale trend map 2. For instance, unlike the era interim and era 5, the simulations show a clearer pattern of windward warming and leeward cooling. We compare the ray analysis and numerical simulations with the annual time series of near surface temperature at the Saint Martin and Larsen Ice Shelf stations on the central windward and leeward slopes, respectively. Both reanalysis and numerical simulations show a good agreement with the observed warming trend. At the Larsen Ice Shelf station, era 5, shows a weaker cooling trend than that depicted by the observations, whereas era interim does not capture the trend. On the other hand, dynamically downscaled simulations forced with era interim capture the observed cooling trend, indicating the existence of added value in Larsen Ice Shelf region. To sum up, we assess the recent near-surface temperature trends over the Antarctic Peninsula using observations, reanalysis, and numerical simulations. Observed trends show contrast between summer and autumn associated with synoptic conditions such as Amundsen, Bellingshausen sea low and Weddell sea low. Annual warming trend is notable at St. Martin Station on the windward side, whereas Larsen Anshel exhibits cooling trend. Regional climate model simulations in general exhibit good skills in simulating the distinct temperature regimes of the Antarctic Peninsula and reproduce a close spatio-temporal variability to each other. We also highlight the potential added values introduced by the regional climate simulation. Thanks for your attention.